the next day, the day after we did this three day run from Palm Beach here to Southport. We've made a really oddball decision, one that I've never done before. Brayden is single handing the boat from Southport to Moorhead City or River Dunes Oriental. We'll explain why, a lot of reasons why, but wish him luck. All right, this is the beginning of the single-handed adventure that no one wanted to go on. I'll do it though, and and I think there's the the, the reasonable expectation that it's going to be bigger, maybe smaller. So um, here it goes though. The tricky thing is getting in the lines filled and get it all done. But right, we'll see what we can do. Flip six. Wait, what are you talking about? Where, which one is this? Who, who, what marina? Slip six. Okay. But you remember that, I'll call you, I'll call you before I get there. Okay, all right, sounds good. I'll see ya. All right, all right, bye. You might wonder why why we're doing this. And the truth is is that it was rough on the first few days that we were doing. It was it was quite rough. Um, rough enough that everything on the counters got put on the floor. Um, anything that could fall off of a counter did fall off of a counter and you needed like two hands to walk around anywhere on the boat. Now that's that's fine if you're driving the boat, but if you're a kid and a baby especially and you didn't really sign up for that and you got three days where like you're just hungered down in like a corner, that's a rough, that's a rough go. And we have to get up there for insurance. Normally we wouldn't have a route like that. And that's, that's, that's tough. That's tough to see your kids kind of go through that when they don't have to. Um, if we were going from like island to island, like the Baham, and there's no other way to do it, like that makes sense. But it's pretty easy to not have them go. Um, go to Enterprise, grab a car, drop it off at the next Enterprise. Like it's like a three hour drive and it's like a day boat ride, right? So that's not that bad. Um, and why not? So Brooke took the kids 
Um, we're really lucky because the port that we were just at, Southport, is the same port that we ended up buying the boat at. And the owners of that boat, they, they took Brooke in um, and at their house, which is a beautiful house, like on a golf course, they just decided that they like Southport and they would stay in Southport when they were done boating. Um, and so it's, it's kind of fun. It's fun talking with them because they have so much boating experience anyways. So that's fun. And Brooke doesn't, there's no reason to do it. So she's gonna meet us tomorrow. And then from River Dunes where we're going to, it's a very relaxing place. This is like a little like fictional, like story tale, like resort it reminds me of. At least last time I was there, that's kind of what it reminds me of. What I'm most looking forward to is the pool has a hot tub. And like, uh, I go to Chubb Marina because the pool has a hot tub. It's like the only hot tub inside the entire Bahamas. Cause why do you need a hot tub in the Bahamas when it's like hundred degrees outside? But I don't care if it's Palm Springs, I'm in the hot tub. It's just, uh, just how it works. I don't care how hot it is. Hot tub feels good. But, um, so we're gonna do it. I, I can do this, this is fine. We'll get kind of through the thick of it, the only open ocean cruise. If the weather was fine, they would totally come. But it's just like them hunkering down and just sitting in a small corner and trying not to barf. Even with seasick medicine, it doesn't help. You're just, you're in a tough spot. So that's what we're doing because we can, because well, because it makes it a lot easier on them. And so that's kind of why we're doing it. All right, so we just got a call on the radio. I think it was from these guys behind me. I'll show it. There you go. Let's see, let's see. Those guys right there. I think it's those guys in the Swift trawler. Could be wrong, but um, I feel bad because it was on channel 16 and they were talking to me, but I didn't want to change channels and I also didn't want to talk on 16. So I had like a one word response, but I feel bad when people call me out on the radio and we don't switch to a working channel. But, uh, but if that's them, it's a cool little boat. Zarpe. I don't know what to do with myself. It's so boring not having like four people needing something every second of the day. I am like uh, completely bored. <laughs> I guess, I mean, I, I thought it'd be like relaxing, but I'm actually just like, what am I gonna do? I mean, this is uh, it's gonna be a lot of time with just like solitude here. Are they gonna rejoin you up in uh, Moorhead Beaufort? I don't know, anything. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> In the town on the hill Where the apples grow The church bells ring Missed the inlet. The so, Sarpe overshot the, the inlet there. Um, I didn't have to come back. I wonder how that would have worked out if I didn't say anything. All right, Zarpe's in front of me. I'll show them, but they missed the inlet. So they're they're continuing going. I'm not sure where. So we'll see what's going to happen. And then here we go. Turning around here. Plenty of depth everywhere. Hope I don't cut this guy off. Let's see. All right, he's he's far away. I'm making everyone that's watching totally sick. Let's go. Ships coming in. The sun rolls up right above the highway. Black, blue, red, yellow, golden skyways It's like the day that you jump into the wind I can't go back down to that water again. These old muddy shoes keep on walking the streets Someone's bride by an Egyptian sheets The window display of some little store in town And there's my reflection against the morning light Hello, Mr. Ghost, Mr. Skeleton White We 
better comb your hair, better wipe that George Clay off your brow. You better stand up straight. All right, so what do you think? This is, we got like five minutes and I'm gonna find out how bad it is out there. Um, and the kids left everything strewn out everywhere, so I gotta go put everything away again. I blame it on them. I guess I'm the one in charge right now, so I can't really blame everything on them anymore. That's a bad thing about not having kids on the boat, is you can't like, why did you leave that on the table kind of thing. Now it's my fault if I leave something on the table. It's kind of like the reason to have a dog, always blame everything on the dog. See what happens. Five minutes, find out how bad the swell is and what direction is that, really. I know it takes a lot to change a worried mind And I know it takes a year to see the warm summertime What was that? What was that? So it's gnarly out. <laughs> This is of course how it works. The time that no one else comes because the weather's gonna be bad, it tends to be way less bad than anyone thought. Hey, makes your life easier. I, mean, I know it's gonna pick up here soon, but uh, I'm still gonna do the hug the coast thing. No, I totally agree. Have you ever asked the nurse if it's a busy day in the hospital? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I always love to do it and I always get scolded every time I do it, but I feel like that's what we're doing right here. We're asking a nurse if it's a busy day in the hospital. Yeah, <laughs> can't get complacent here. I might get spanked, <laughs> but yeah, busy day at the hospital for sure. <laughs> All right, good luck. All right, so I'm out. We're out on the water and we're not that far out, so it's hard to tell, but it's pretty relaxing. I mean, it's there's nothing right now going on out here. Um, there's a bump, right? Like a very slow, like soothing, like putting a baby to sleep lull. But that's it. Dang it. Everyone should have come. Everyone should have come. But you know what? It's a great place to stop because I really want to know what the other guys say, uh, Gary, uh, the stories are always great and I feel bad that I didn't have time to stop. So Brooke's gonna come back, and she's gonna tell me all the fun things they did and all the cool things that Gary and Tina are up to. Ah. The tombstone fades and the nails will rust Tall old trees, they all turn to dust Every day, it's so slow you can't even see. I guess I'll try to find another thing to be. Lord, carry me like a sailing ship. Comfort me before I slip. Dark side of the moon, all this spinning around hurts my head. I just sit here lonesome for you. All right, so it's middle of the night. I'm still going. This computer is way too bright, ruining all my night vision, but that's okay right now. Um, it's just boring. That's the only thing that's to it. It's just not. Uh, there's no one to. There's no one to do anything with. Um, but we're cruising and it ended up being extremely easy going. When you look at the weather, there's a lull around this time. And so I'm hoping that it doesn't pick up later because there's absolutely no wind right now at all. And if that wind picks up, I don't know what's gonna happen. But it was supposed to be like over a meter waves right on the bow with like more than 20 knots of wind, which is gonna add to that. And then we lucked out because there's no wind and the swell is not there at all. So I got lucky, um, but we're doing good. We're gonna hit the inlet right about five o'clock, but it only gets bright at six o'clock. I don't know how to do that. So I don't know if I'm gonna go in when it's dark. It'll kind of be light, right? But dark, or if I just kind of do little laps, like circles, 
which you'll see those all over my charts. It's like these circles outside of inlets and they're just like extremely frustrating because you really want to go in and you want to tie up and you want to be done. <laughs> Um, I got there way too early. Well, not way too early. It says I'm going to be in there at like six o'clock. Um, we're gonna, it's we're going through the. Let me turn this one. We're going through the inlet right now, and we we were about to. We were probably about 45 minutes away, and it's nowhere near light. So we could have gone and anchored right outside the beach. Um, the wind's blowing offshore, so it would have been okay, but. I didn't want to mess with the anchor, put the bridle on and all that. I have to hang over the bow. Being solo at night wasn't extremely comfortable with that. So we decided that we're going to go and do circles. I'm sure I would have been fine anchoring. It's just, and I didn't want to mess with it. Um, and this is what it looks like here. So as much as I would love to anchor, I think this is a better call. It's morning. Ah, we made it a whole day. Whole night, I guess. That would be proper. It's um, it's 66 degrees out here. I have not felt 66 degrees in way too long. This is nice. This is really nice. Um, we're about to get in River Dunes. I'm excited. It was extremely uneventful. But we did it. Well, where is he? Main captain. Got it done. So I made it. I keep on saying that, I keep on saying that I made it. Um, I'm about three hours away, but it's like this big river, swamp river, swamp river, just goes forever. And that's the ICW. It's, it's actually, it's a fun place to be. There's a lot of little houses, a lot of things to see. The only problem is, is that there's only a small channel of water and then everything else is too shallow so if you stop paying attention for too long like I can do um, it's bad news <laughs> but uh, I know I know how this works so by now uh, from from experience from some negative experience all right it is time it's about 1230 right now and it's about time to set up lines I have, this is the last little stretch before I get in, and then I'm done. So maybe you're done in like 40 minutes, 30 minutes. halfway down I want you to be aware of, okay? Copy that. Is that the little red one? Actually, no. We've got, believe it or not, it's a little like the Bahamas. We've got a uh, white PVC pipe that sticks out of the creek and you want to make sure you leave it to port and that'll uh, let you know that you you are, in fact, in the middle of Broad Creek. White PVC pipe to port. That'll be after the green three, after you've made that slow turn to port and you're on a 260, you just want to keep your eyes open for that on your way to red four, which is where we are. Copy that. All right, so about to come into the dock. 
Um, I gotta be honest, I'm a little nervous because they don't have Brooke out there saying, hey, it's about 10 more feet, then you go back five feet. It's about 10 more feet, go back five feet. Yeah, about 10 feet still. <laughs> uh, it really does help, actually. I know what she means. I, I, know, I know that when it's like, I get it. I know what she's saying. So, it's gonna be hard uh, using the instructions of the dock master, but the dock master here is like um, incredibly professional and thoroughly knowledgeable. So if this is a marina to do it at, I think this is one of the better ones. Because um, they really know what they're doing. It's not like some kids on their summer vacation that are just uh, pretending like they know what they're doing. <laughs> We got three feet under us. That's a tight one. Places, as you probably will see from this video, Brayden single handed the boat for the first time from Southport to Oriental. Uh, it was about 110 miles overnight. I'm insanely proud of him. Um, we just had hit kind of like a point where the kids really wanted off and I wanted a little break and we were able to spend the night with the previous owners of our boat who were insanely hospitable. Um, they took us to dinner and the kids got to run around and play. And don't worry, I'm driving on just this driveway. There's no one here, so I'm safe. But it was just exactly what we needed. And I'm tired still, but we feel refreshed and I'm sure Brayden is just gonna crash when I get in. So we're pulling up. Yeah, it, it, that was a new milestone. He's never done it. He's always wanted to try it. And this was a good stretch and he killed it. He's a good, good captain. Back at one of our favorite places. River Dune I don't know, we'll talk to him. All right, I gotta put the phone down.